Well, welcome again to another episode of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today we're going to be following up on a issue that I dealt with a couple weeks ago, and that was the Carl Lentz Hill song, The View interview, in which the Women of the View, the daytime talk show, interviewed the Hillsong evangelical pastor, Carl Lentz, and asked him very clearly, does your church believe that abortion is wrong? And he totally, totally refused to commit himself one way or the other. He totally compromised his evangelical witness on this moral issue of our day because he simply would not give his opinion. He would not teach. Here was a Bible-believing pastor, supposedly an evangelical pastor, who was given a platform, millions and millions of viewers on a network television program, and he was asked point blank, does your church teach that abortion is a sin? And he refused to walk through the scriptures, starting with, it could go to the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder, the word for murder there. It's not kill, it's murder, unjustified killing. Thou shalt not murder, and the abortion is unjustified killing, it's murder, it is taking of an innocent life and going through the scripture and walking the people through the biblical teaching of what abortion is and why it's murder. He wouldn't do that. He refused to do that. So the Canadian broadcaster Mario Bryson gave an excellent presentation. We used a little bit of his clip, an excerpt of his video presentation to show that Carl Lentz compromised on the Christian moral message. And I wanted to say amen to that. He did a great job. Well, Mario has come back again for a second part on that same issue, that same interview with Carl Lentz on The View, only this time he demonstrates and shows how corruption spreads because now you have a solidly theological-minded apologist, Dr. Michael Brown, defending Carl Lentz on his appearance on The View television show. In other words, Dr. Brown was asked about Carl Lentz's weak and pathetic and compromised Christian message by refusing to say that abortion was a sin and tried to even teach the Christian moral ethic on this issue. And Dr. Brown, the best he could say was, well, I wouldn't have put it that way. Or he also said, for example, some people were complaining to Dr. Brown because he knows Carl Lentz, he's been in communication with Carl Lentz, And some people wrote in to Dr. Brown and says, why haven't you rebuked this brother in the Lord? You know, steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron kind of effect. Why haven't you talked to him and explained to him what the controversy is? And Dr. Brown's comment was, well, if you want to talk to Pastor Lentz, you're going to have to contact him yourself. In other words, I'm not going to deal with any of this. I'm not going to get myself into the position of criticizing a friend, a brother, someone that I like and admire and I want to be on good terms with. And for the sake of his friendship and for the sake of his brotherhood with this pastor and the Hillsong organization and the conference speaking events that they share and the many commonalities that they have, for that sake, he will not even admit that Carl Lenz compromised on his position on abortion. He won't even say that. So Mario came on his broadcast and exposed that whole hypocrisy, the Dr. Brown hypocrisy. So then Dr. Brown comes a second time and he says he wants to clear the air on any misconceptions about his comments about Pastor Carl Lentz in the Hillsong Pastor's interview on The View. And he goes at it again and still refuses to criticize or even rebuke Carl Lentz for his weak and pathetic statement about abortion. 
And my view on this whole thing is that it's very simple. Dr. Brown, the apologist, the godly theologian and Christian communicator, which we all have respected his work, and we do respect his work, is simply compromising this point because he doesn't want to hurt the relationship he has with Carl Lentz. Now, there may be some excellent motives behind it. He may say, well, I want to remain in a dialogue with Pastor Lentz. I want to help him come, uh, you know, lead him along so that maybe at some point he could have a good, strong, clear pro-life stand in public. Okay, that is understandable, but still there is no excuse for defending someone who is in error, who is wrong, who compromised. You have to remember, Carl Lentz is a pastor of thousands of people at his church. He also influences millions of people worldwide with the Hillsong Church Network. So when Carl Lentz goes on national television and refuses to articulate the Christian view of abortion, he is role modeling for the wrong reasons what Christians shouldn't be doing when they are asked about abortion. He is role modeling a weak and pathetic and a compromised way of communicating truth. He isn't communicating the authentic Christian message and he's a role model in his position of leadership within the Hillsong Church Network. And so that is what Dr. Brown should be thinking about, not just maintaining a friendship with Carl Lentz or a discipleship mentoring relationship with him. He needs to be thinking about the millions of people who are influenced by this pastor. And when they see a pastor of Carl Lentz's status on a national television reaching millions of people, and when he's asked point blank, what does your church think about abortion? When Carl Lentz refuses to teach the simple Christian moral position based on the Bible truths. He refuses to do it. He refuses to answer. Now, what does that do? That role models for millions of other Christians around the world, hey, when I'm asked difficult and tough and sticky and controversial issues in public, I can wimp out just like he does because he did it and he's role modeling for me. He's a leader and I trust that his instincts are accurate. Well, they're not accurate, and Dr. Brown needs to stop apologizing for Carl Lentz. Dr. Brown is an apologist for Christianity, which means he gives reasons and a reasoned defense for Christianity. He is not an apologist for a compromising pastor, and he needs to say, I do not agree, I disagree strongly with Pastor Carl Lentz's attitude toward abortion as he communicated it on The View. Now, another bizarre thing that Dr. Brown said, Dr. Michael Brown on his broadcast, was that he said that Carl Lentz is a passionate pro-life pastor. That does not at all line up with what we saw on The View. If you are a passionate pro-life pastor, like myself, for example, this past January, I was in Washington at the March for Life. I marched with thousands of other Christians because we're passionate about ending abortion. We believe it is evil. We believe it is the murder of innocent children. So we're passionate about that. If you're a passionate pro-life Christian, when you're asked about abortion, you are more than eager to explain what the Bible says about abortion. You're more than eager to articulate your position, your Christian position. You are not going to try to hide or weasel out or compromise or water it down or wishy-wash or say like Pastor Lentz did on The View when asked, do you think it's a cut and dry moral issue? You're not gonna say like Lentz, well, a lot of people do. A lot of people think it's that way. No, you're going to say, yes, it is a cut and dry issue. It is evil. It is wrong. It is sin. The Bible condemns it, etc. 
If you're a passionate pro-life Christian, that's what you're going to say. You're not going to be what Carl Lentz was on The View. So, Dr. Brown, you need to stop defending a compromising pastor, and you need to begin to speak the truth. You're letting your friendship or your relationship with Pastor Carl Lentz or his association of Hillsong Churches, you're letting the influences of a fellowship and fellowships among like-minded pastors influence your speaking the truth. And you need to stop that and you need to speak the truth, come what may. I'm not saying you need to go and beat up on him and criticize him and just take him to task point by point, but you need to make it very clear. The way he conducted himself in public on The View on abortion is unacceptable for a Christian pastor. Unacceptable. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are the most popular person in the world or the least popular person in the world. I don't care if you're the biggest church pastor or the least smallest church pastor. It doesn't matter. You need to articulate Christian truth because you're a pastor. A pastor is someone who teaches the Bible to the people. And if a pastor cannot even do that when he's given a platform, that person needs to be talked to. And Dr. Brown, you need to talk to Carl Lentz. You need to stop encouraging him. You need to stop defending him. Stop apologizing for him. Stop making excuses for him. Stop making silly, outrageous statements like Carl Lentz is a passionate pro-life person. He isn't. Because if you're a passionate pro-life person, you are going to articulate your position in public. If you are a pro-abortion and you're passionately pro-abortion, you are going to articulate that pro-abortion position in public when someone hands you a question that you are dying to answer. And if you are a passionate pro-life Christian, when someone in a public forum in front of millions of people hands you a question that you want to answer, you're going to answer it. You're going to explain why abortion is sin. You're going to explain why abortion is murder. And he didn't. In fact, he tried every which way to avoid even dealing with the topic as if he wanted that thing to go away. Well, so brother... Mario Bryson has put together another response to this, the second one. And so I want to play a little bit about that. And then we want to come back and make a final comment. So let's watch Mario's second segment on this issue. All right. Hey, everyone. It's TVC Mario. And you're here for a video I needed to make as a follow-up to this one right here. I called... Hillsong Pastor Carl Lentz Compromising on the View, a video I did in response to Carl Lentz and his comments that he made on abortion, Black Lives Matters, politics, social issues, and all sorts of other things when he went on a super mainstream, worldly, secular, antichrist spirited TV show we are all familiar with called The View, a very uh, third wave feminist anti-Christian show. So if you haven't seen this video, please, uh, I've left it linked up and I highly recommend that you check it out. In fact, if you haven't seen it, uh, I recommend watching it before you take the time to watch this one. So maybe you should pause this, watch it and come back. Uh, but I wanted to talk about what happened in response. I mean, uh, so many people, you know, as expected, went ahead and uh, called him out. You know, we're going to talk about Ben Shapiro in this video and his comments. Uh, I agree with and the majority of people that stood up, you know, I was in total agreement with but uh, here we had uh, Dr. Brown who we're going to look at the comments and unfortunately, no, I, I don't agree uh, with uh, Dr. Brown on uh, what he said. So in today's video, I'm going to respond. We're also going to look at Paul Flynn and some really great comments that he made. Um, uh, a really good brother on this topic as well. So I uh, really do hope that you enjoy today's video and that you find it to be a blessing. So let's get right into it. Now, some points that I wanted to just elaborate on that I really didn't emphasize that I think after re-watching the interview and uh, re-going over this, you know, 
notice this right off the bat the way that they pitch this this pastor is all about his looks and how cool he is and he doesn't look like other pastors and he t and he's got tattoos yeah he's so cool you know we talked about that but right off the bat it was that and then as soon as they start the show they say this hillsong is seen as this hip progressive okay church that is drawing huge millennial crowds but is still evangelical Okay, and then they ask them, where do you stand on social issues? And this is where they talk about gay marriage and abortion. But I wanted to pause here a little bit more than I did and emphasize something. The church can't be seen as hip to the world, okay? If the church, your church, is hip and progressive to the view and their audience, there is something seriously wrong. You need to examine yourself immediately. This thing about being hip, what does this even mean? What is what is being hip and cool have to do with being biblical? Well, if you're hip, you're in trouble, okay? Mr. Pastor, Carl Lentz. Uh, progressive basically means, and notice how they tie progressive into gay marriage and abortion. Well, they're saying if you're a hip and progressive church, then you have to be okay with gay marriage and okay with abortion. Now, as we're going to see, Dr. Brown and those who kind of backed uh, Carl Lentz up on this one, they took the position that, yeah, you know, he kind of... He, he didn't take a firm stand, but if you listen to what he said, he, he really did take a strong stance. Well, what we need to realize here is that snakes have two tongues. We're dealing with a snake. I'm sorry to call it as it is. I, I don't know what's wrong with the pastors here today. We can't just call a wolf for what he is, a snake, a wolf in sheep's clothing among us who is going to compromise the very uh, biblical values that, that are foundational to Christianity. It's coming. You can see him. He's a, a four-tongued snake up there with double-speaking techniques, as pointed out, okay? And um, we're going to look at this right here, but uh, Brother Paul Flynn called it right out. It's a double speak. Okay. That's what we're dealing with. With Carl Lentz, we're dealing with someone who is going to double speak when he's speaking to his congregation and to Dr. Brown and on his Twitter, uh, which he knows is uh, his Instagram maybe, which is a predominant evangelical following, he's going to stand evangelically and, and, and resonate more soundly and strongly in those values. But then he goes on The View and he's asked and he gets off wishy-washy, double-speaking nonsense, okay? When in actuality, in this generation, the millennial crowd more than ever needs a man of God to stand firm for biblical values, okay? When the millions of people are looking in, when the whole world is looking in. But no, they see someone who uh, is labeled hip and progressive. Uh, he um, basically figure skates all over, does um, acrobatics with his words in order to kind of jump around the truth of the of the matter okay uh so i'm gonna go ahead right now i'm gonna play for you first uh brother paul flynn because i want to point out the double-tongued uh way of carl lenz so check this out i've been talking about hill song on and off for years and it's it's the same thing over and over when it comes to hill song Hillsong is a machine. It's a brand. It's an image. And they don't want to annoy anybody. Honestly. They want to appeal to as many people as possible. They don't want to come across as liberal and hating the Bible openly. And they don't want to come across as... Unloving, you could say, quote unquote, to the non Christian world. They want to embrace everybody. Now, the, the reasons for that motivation is that, you know, you could say follow the money. From what I've noticed with Brian Houston and the whole organization, not to get into any of the other scandals that they've been involved in over the years, but there have, there have been other scandals, unfortunately. Um, that they very much want to have both one feet and one, you know, each world, and they they don't want to take a strong stand in anything. And I and I think it's because they know 
that they will lose if they go firmly against the Bible. They're going to lose a huge amount of well, they're going to lose a huge amount of money. And if they go in the other direction and are very much preaching the world unapologetically in a way that they should, do you think as many doors are going to be open to them in public? All right, so those are really great comments made by Brother Paul Flynn. I have to agree. I believe that is exactly, exactly what we're seeing with Hillsong. Uh, these type of compromises that are being made where they want to appeal to the uh, Christians, the evangelicals, but also to the world, to the secular. And the Bible is very clear that you cannot make yourself a friend of the world. Whoever does such thing becomes an enemy of God. So please, uh, please be vigilant, be on guard, use discernment. Now, with that in mind, this uh, understanding that you know, Hillsong wants to please the world and the the evangelicals. Look at this outcome, okay? Uh, so here's uh, the world, the secular, but also Bra Dr. Brown. So they're both going to be in agreement here. This is how good his double speak method is. This lying snake. Have an abortion? Um, that's the kind of conversation we would have. Finding out your story, where you're from, what Work you believe. Through it. Like, talk yeah, about I mean, God's the judge. People have to live to their own convictions, and I think if I have to tell you... Uh... Why are they clapping immediately? Why is The View's audience clapping? They're a worldly audience. They're not an evangelical audience. They're clapping because that is what they want to hear from a pastor. They don't want to hear that sin... Uh, abortion is a sin, which is a biblical truth. I mean, thou shalt not murder. Uh, the Bible is very clear that uh, the life starts even before the womb that God had a plan in the beginning for you. Uh, so this is just ridiculous. But somehow, Dr. Brown is going to defend this. And somehow is because Carl is such a good double speaker. He's able to deceive evangelicals and the world. What a snake. Um, that's such, a, that's such a broad question to me. I'm going, I'm going higher. I want to sit with somebody and say, where do you believe? Um, so it's I, not an open and shut case with you. Some people would say it is. I, I think to me, I'm trying to teach people who Jesus is first. Mm -hmm. Some people would say who it is, right? You see that? So that's, well, oh, that's one side of the tongue, but now he's going to use the other side. Mm -hmm. Find out their story before I start picking and choosing what I think is sin in your life. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know your name. What I pick and choose, well, if you know the Bible and you're a pastor, you know that abortion is a sin. But watch this. Let, let's watch Dr. Brown. All right. So very easy to find fault with that, to be upset with that, to say, why didn't you make a clear statement? Why did you make it? That was a conversation that you need to have or talk it through with the person. And Carl is actually passionately pro-life. And here's what he posted today. So I just want to read it to you. Recently, in an interview, I was asked directly if abortion was sin. I did not answer the question directly for a number of reasons, and that has caused some confusion about our stance as a church on this matter. I do believe abortion is sinful. Our prayers that we can... I'm just going to stop it there. You're not able to double speak like this as a pastor. You have to have one message when you're on The View, one message when you're on your Instagram, one message when you're on your Facebook. What is this? Why are we allowing this two-faced double speak technique to be done and operate us? It's deceit. It's not right. We need men of God who are going to stand the same that they would in all places. This is not what we do. And let's not play games here, Dr. Brown. What is wrong with you? This is ridiculous. This is insane, okay? Now, I'm going to point something out because you pastors need to clue in, okay? I'm much younger than you. I'm 31 years old, and what I've watched is my entire generation of millennials, okay? I'm like one of the first, uh, right, I guess you could say, uh, Generation X millennial. That's what I would be considered as. And under me, they have taken us away, and it's because of your weak stance. You're not standing against evil, and, and that is causing an entire generation to go away. The world, Hollywood, this, the media, they're taking them away. They have an agenda to, to brainwash and take away the kids, and they've done it successfully. Look in your churches. They're not there. 
The only ones that are at are at these false ones that are now hip and progressive and eventually are going to accept gay marriage, abortion. The great falling away as prophesied in the Bible is here and these are the men that are falling away before our very eyes. This is two tongues. Uh, snake compromise wake up to this this is not a game this is this is insane continue to help and love those that deal with the pain of regret from personal choices rather than cast further shame and guilt on those already carrying so much and create a church that can teach people how to form convictions based on God's word so his his uh, emphasis uh, in fact uh, Matt if you could just put that back up for for one more moment there's a little bit more to the statement, uh, uh, based on God's word, that will be the driving force in all the decisions. I will continue to point people to Jesus above all else. Every opportunity I get, the story of God's redemptive grace available to all is the best news available. So what Carl Lenz is saying, whether you like what he said on The View or not, or wish he said things differently, that's not the issue. I want to focus on the statement here. And his point is obviously a lot of people have had abortions and he wants to lead them to Jesus so they can find forgiveness and redemption. And that. No, 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 Dr. Brown. You have a setting straight video as well. He's tried to once again defend this. Go ahead and dislike this. This is insane. Men of God who can't even stand up uh, against wolves, two tongued snakes, uh, people who love the world, who are compromising. Okay, even Ben Shapiro who is not born again, okay, understands this issue even better. A broader critique of the role of religion. So it's really funny. The left says prayers are good, but only if they are directed in our direction. Now, what, the, what people who are conservative believe, conservative religious people, is that the direction for the prayer is basically toward God, which means that you actually have to look at what God's agenda is in particular circumstances. God is not just something out there that is non-discoverable. The Bible is pretty clear about this. Right? In Deuteronomy, Moses specifically says, it is not in heaven where you can't understand it. It's down here. God, the whole purpose of having a revelation is that you understand things. Now, not everyone has to believe in revelation. You don't have to believe in revelation, right? You can be skeptical of revelation. But if you say you believe in revelation, at the very least, you should be adherent to the revelation. Right? If you say you're a Bible-believing person, you should at least believe in the Bible. In the same way that if you, you know, believe in, in global warming, you should at least believe in global warming. Right? Whatever you're going to believe in, believe in it. Otherwise, you're a liar. Well, Hillsong, uh, there's a megachurch pastor. Uh, I don't know uh, Hillsong particularly well, but there's a, a, a guy named Carl Lentz, apparently, who's quite popular uh, and uh, dresses in very odd fashion. Uh, and he was on The View wearing glasses that he apparently got from a Forever 21 uh, and a medallion that I don't know what it represents. But he looks, like, uh, he looks kind of like Marky Mark from 1991. In any case... Uh, Carl Lentz is a very popular pastor. Maybe he's great. I don't know. Uh, but what he said here was not great, right, on The View. Uh, so he's on The View, and he is asked about abortion, uh, saying abortion is sinful. And here is his answer. This is where religion does fail. Okay, Religion doesn't fail just because you don't support gun control. Religion does fail if your Bible says abortion is bad, and then you give this answer. And I'd like to know your name. Well, Nonsense. Nonsense. Sin is still sin. It doesn't mean that you have to be mean to people who have sinned. The whole purpose of talking to people is to find out their story. But we have to start from a certain basic premise. Yes, abortion is a sin. Of course, abortion is a sin. And soft peddling it for the left is not going to win you adherents or converts. Soft peddling bad, you know, evil is not going to, uh, soft peddling sin is not going to draw more people to you. It's going to alienate more people from religion because that's what gets people to believe in this. I'm spiritual, but not religious now. Soft peddling sin. That's exactly what this guy is doing. He is softly softening it for them. And the Bible, in fact, says that anyone who does that is abominable to the Lord, just like the murderer. It's the same weight on them. Okay, you don't do what Carl Lentz is doing. This double speak, um, basically making sin into something. Ah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Murder. We'll, we'll talk about it. You know, there's certain circumstances. Uh, but even if he doesn't mean that, you're like, oh, that's not what he meant. That's not what he meant. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's not what he meant. Okay, that was Mario's second uh, program on this issue. And as you can see, it was hard hitting, but it was accurate and it was factual. And we'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless. Mm -hmm.